Good afternoon, dear brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground to truth. Before we begin, um, number one, first and foremost, in the community section, um, I put the link for the video that our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, gave unto our beloved brother Alexander B. Hartley. If you have not seen that video yet, you're missing out. That um, wow, what a what a gracious gift our Lord gave unto our brother in that beautiful, beautiful um, video that the Lord gave him. Check that out. That will be in the description box regardless. But, I mean, if you have not seen that video yet, you go check that out. It's beautiful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, but also, before we begin, dear brethren, sisters, Church of God, Church of the Living God, I, I, I have a, I have a prayer, personal prayer request of you. Um, in Joshua, chapter 9, you read about the Gabeonites who deceived the children of Israel because they were a skirt. Because, you know, the children of Israel, the Lord behind them, they just going whooping the snot out of everybody. But the Gabeonites deceived, deceived the children of Israel and came up to them, okay? Uh, jo Joshua chapter 9. Verses 9 on to verse 14 to start. And then we'll, we'll get into the text of what we're going to be talking about. And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come, because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Shion king of Hezbon, and to Og king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them. And say unto them, We are your servants. Therefore now make ye a league with us. This our bread we took hot from our hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. But now, behold, it is dry and moldy. And you read the context uh, even further from verses 1 on to verse 9. It was, all, it was a sham. It was a facade. It was fake. They took the old stuff and the old shoes. They put on a performance. They put on the facade. Okay? And these bottles of wine, which were fill, filled, were new. And behold, they be rent. These are garments and our shoes are become old by reason of a very long journey. Okay? And it, it's, it was a verse, um, verse uh, 4 and 5. They did work wily and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles old and rent and bound up and old shoes and clouted upon their feet and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. Okay? Verse 14. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Last month, toward the end of the month, um, you you need to know this, but uh, before we get into the con to context, uh, before we get into the text that we're going to be considering today, and I want to I want to share this with you before I forget about it. Last month, towards the end of the month, um, the electric, you know, we live in an apartment and everything is electric. There's no vents, there's no gas, or nothing like that. It's all electric. And here in Illinois. We, you know, we have ComEd, and they, 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 they just jacking the price up like crazy. So the other day, uh, a couple of people came to our apartment door, and we, we let them in and whatnot, and we're talking to them. And they said that we can lower your prices and get rid of the surcharge and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't ask counsel at the mouth of the Lord. 
It's called, they're called Nordic Energy. Have any of you heard of this? Uh, they're the windmill people, okay? And at the time, you know, you'd tell me, hey, you're going to save you money because the electric bill around here, and we, we are conservative with our electricity. I mean, we really are. Uh, but, I mean, the, just the prices for electricity here in Illinois has just been skyrocketing no matter what, you know. Um, but anyway, they, and the two hemetic individuals, I don't perceive that they were doing anything malicious. They were just doing their jobs working for a company, Nordic Energy, which I had looked online about, and I should have done that beforehand. Because I, I signed up for it. And uh, so it's supposed to start by June 5th. But I have until May 31st to decline, even though I signed something, which I should know better. But I didn't ask counsel at the mouth of the Lord. And upon researching, after the fact, I found out that this Nordic energy, there is hardly any good review about this said company, Nordic Energy. Now, for one thing, I do want to get off the grid of the uh, Jesuit-controlled con conglomerate electric, electric company, okay? I do. But looking into this Nordic thing with the windmill energy and whatnot, um, um, it, it's, hor it's horrible. So this Monday, the 13th, May you please keep your servant in prayer that the Lord's hand be upon this, if it is his will, that the right, the wrong could be righted and get out of that scam before it is too late. I ask for your prayers for that, please, okay? The electricity around here has just been so outrageously expensive. Uh, it's, it's foolish, silly. I mean, it really is. But um, like I said, the guys came, the guy and the gal came to our door. It's like, hey, we can save you money. It's like, Whoop, perk up the ears, and then after they were gone, I looked up online here. It's like, oy vey. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. So, please keep that in your prayers for your servant. Okay? Now, enough of that. In your authorized version of the scriptures, Please read along with me in your authorized version of the scriptures, word for word, verse by verse. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily. What are these things be so? Read along with me. Keep an eye on me because I make mistakes. Okay? So please read along with me in your authorized version of the scriptures. And like I said, if you have not seen the video that the Lord gave our dear brother Alexander B. Hartley, um, watch that. You're you, you're missing out. That that that's that was a beautiful video that the Lord gave our brother. Beautiful. Isaiah chapter three, verses nine, on to verse fifteen. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom; they hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Hmm. When you boast about, you know, your sin, when you boast about the things that are contrary to God and uh, flaunt it in everyone's face. I mean, look at these trans people for, for number one. Okay, and look at how sin is being promoted in the culture of any nation under heaven today. Okay, it's flaunted. It's flaunted. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hands shall be given him. The Lord will reward you according as the works of your hands. Now, 
in this dispensation, that is not in regards to salvation, salvifically. But, like, like our brother brought up yesterday, um, yesterday, our Lord can and will forgive any sin. He can. There isn't a sin today that he cannot forgive. Uh, the unpardonable sin is not for us today. Okay, don't even don't even let that into your mind. Okay, don't don't that don't that's uh, people use that as a snare. Okay, all right, but there ain't one sin that the Lord can't forgive today. Okay, but see in that forgiveness that does not mean that He will remove the physical consequences of what you have done. Example. My life as a lost man, the drugs, the fornication, the sin. The Lord could heal my body at any time, but see, this is only a temporary thing. This is not the permanence, okay? All right? I am reaping these days, in my 50s, going to be, Lord willing, I am reaping what I have sown when I was a lost man, the things that I did to my body, okay? I'm forgiven of the sins that I have committed. When I die, I'm going to be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, amen. But the consequences I did back there, I'm feeling today, okay? And... As the scripture saith, if you sow to the Spirit, the capital S, you will reap of the Spirit, capital S. If you reap to the flesh, vanity of vanity, said the preacher. Okay? And see, rightly dividing the word of truth, dear friend, you have to remember, okay? Salvation is not in these hands. It is of the Lord. We need to make the right decision because God the Father does not force salvation upon anybody or damnation upon anybody. You have to choose. Okay? You have to choose. All right? So, remember to always have that distinction because someone will come around and say, he's talking about salvation. No, I'm not. Because today in this dispensation, you go the way of the cross, the way the Lord has chosen, the way the Lord has called, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name and he saved you. You're once saved, always saved. Okay? It's not your salvation. It's his. Okay? That's taken care of. Once saved, always saved. Okay? Once saved, always saved. That's taken care of. But as it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 11 out of 13, you can be denied so many things. And the consequences of what you have done are not, <laughs> or rarely, even taken away. But the sin is. Does that make sense to you? Okay, let's continue. As for my people, children are their oppressors and Women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. Children are their oppressors. Everything's for the children, the little innocent darlings that most of you people are turning into little devils. Handing them off to Satan with the, the tablets and the hell phones. Putting them in front of a TV and forgetting about them. Sending them to the Jesuits to be trained against God. And women rule over them. The feminization of this society here in America especially. Okay? The feminization, women ruling over you, sign of judgment here in America. 
And those, the children and the women that are ruling over you, the leaders, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. It's the pyramid thing. Starts at the pinnacle and then it falls down all the way to the base. And with the pyramid thing, also you got to remember, the base is wider than the top. So the prophet from the base flies up to the top and overcomes the top with enormous wealth. Hence the Vatican. Okay, that's how that whole pyramid scheme thing works in reality. The Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. And as Brother Alexander uh, spake on yesterday, this pleading is not, <laughs> no, you're on trial. Here is your accusation against you. Your accusation is here, is in here. That's why a lot of you don't like it. That's why you'll go to a Bible and not the scriptures. But remember, the answer is also in the scriptures. The Lord will enter into judgment. Oh wait, the Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people in pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord. Psalm 12. Psalm 12. Those who lead you cause thee to err. Those who lead you. You're your own God. You shall be like the Most High. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. For the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart. Do they speak? And a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said, With our tongue we will prevail, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? All things are lawful for you. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. And every idle word you speak, you will give an account thereof. <laughs> that, if, if, if nothing else, dude, ought to scare the hell out of you. Okay? If nothing else ought to scare the hell out of you, the fact that the one that, you, you know, a lot of you reject... And the, the one that allow you think you serve, you're going to have to stand before the actual Christ and give an account, but also give an account for everything you've said. You see, when you get these twits who come around accusing uh, brethren of lying and stuff like that, it's like, uh, d d dude, okay, all right, be not many man masters, for we shall receive the greater condemnation. I'm by no means a master, God forbid. But see, you got to understand, everything that I've ever said to you, I want to give an account to the Lord about. So it's important that the Lord's the one who's uh, guiding it, and it's in line with the Scripture. That's why with all these devils and these uh, King James Bible-even Christians who twist it to suit their own need, to fit their own cloth, Y'all got to remember, we all have to remember these things. We're all going to give an account. Amen. Who are we? Beautiful. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. Words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, 
purified seven times. That's a reference under the seven language purification that the authorized version, that, that was the final purification that the word of God came to in its finality, the authorized version. Okay? Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, the words, the words. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. They who lead thee cause thee to err. Children, women, servants of the Vatican. Luke 19. Check this out. Luke 19. Our lips are our own. Yes, all things are lawful for you. God does not force anything upon you. No, he does not. But know thou, for all this, you're going to give an account to God. For all this, God will bring thee into judgment for everything. Like I said, if anything, anything of any of you who see this, who may see this, if anything ought to scare the living hell out of you, I'm going to have a given account for everything you've ever said. And you know, when it comes to this, so many of these people so many of them. that's why like when I when I've made mistakes and brethren like Brad and the correction videos are up that's one of the reasons why if you search this channel that the Lord has given your servant the mistakes and the corrections are all there for you to see okay why because I'm going to have to give an account for every single thing I've ever said to you Okay? Everything. Hey, Scott, you looking at me? You wicked, filth, devil, Calvinist, coadjutor. You know you're going to have to give an account for what you said? Do you realize that? Or don't you care? Huh? Huh? All you free gracers. All of you. Just believe and receive. Hey, Mr. Sunken Eye, you looking at me? You know that you're saying that prayer is a work, repentance is a work. You're, you're going to have to give an account for what you've said. Who are you? Who are we? Don't, see, that, if you were to say, if you guys were saints, that ought to scare the hell out of you. But it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Why? Because you're all not saved. Not all of you, of course. I didn't mean it like that the way that sounded, but those people I'm referencing. And they threw it right back at me. It's like, I, I know that. I know that. Thank you very little. <laughs> I, I know that. I'm, a, praise the Lord. He has made that very aware to me, more so than probably you. Okay? Why? Because I got brethren who get on me the minute I mess up. Ah, sweetheart of a brother who uh, who find comb when he can. He, he, and, that, and that brother don't skip a beat. That brother don't skip a beat. He he you know, when we say it's like, hey, get in the scriptures, that, that brother's in the scriptures. He's reading along. He's reading along and he he's got his head on right. And when I have made a mistake. It's usually that brother or brother Alexander or our brother from the Northeast as even sometimes him or brother Jeff or, bro or, or our brother from uh, Ohio even. It doesn't matter. See, when I make a mistake, the brethren is like, whoa, 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 Brad, Brad. They say, hey, Brad. Okay? All right? Why? Because I'm going to give an account for everything I've said, for everything that has been taught. Okay? Okay? I think a lot of you who shoot out at your mouth ought to remember these things. Think about that, brethren. 
Think about these wicked Pentecostal charismatics. Okay? The Catholics. <laughs> okay? Think about that. Luke 19, verses 11 on to verse 14. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. Our lips are our own. All things are lawful for you. God does not force you to do anything. No, he does not. Nor does the devil. No, you got to make the right choices. These people have chosen what? What are these people? Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Check this out. Verses 33 and 40. Matthew 21, Brad. <laughs> 33 and 40. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it about and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that he might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. The Lord, during the dispensation under the law, sent his prophets, his servants. Today, in this dispensation, the body of Christ is your witness and your testimony of who the Lord is. Okay? Y'all are without excuse. And see, what's worse, now think about these self-theists who have actually heard the true gospel and rejected, and also the devil coadjutors who know the true gospel, but yet work purposely contrary to it. And they think on their deathbed, you're going to recant and get into heaven. Uh-uh. Yes, the impossible is possible. But the reality of the situation Again, he sent other servants, more than the first. And they did it unto them likewise, because they didn't want to hear the truth. Our lips are our own. Who's, who will reign over us? We will not have this man to reign over us. We shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. We will be like the Most High. You are your own God. The last of all, he sent unto them his son saying they will reverence my son. Same people that ought to have known, but don't. Rather, they don't want to. Again. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. Here is where you find the actual Lord Jesus Christ, the authorized version. It is this, the authorized version, that points to you who the real Lord Jesus Christ is, God our Father. And see, the devils know that. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? The devils know the truth. Like in yesterday's video from Brother Alexander. You know, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? Okay? There has to be a working knowledge of what is truth for a lot of these guys to deceive the way they do. Okay? All right? But they come to, like it says there in verse 38, But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him. And let us seize on his inheritance. 
we will replace God with ourselves. <laughs> like it says in Luke 19 again, verse 14, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man reign over us. Verse 39 in Matthew 21, and they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? Uh, Luke 19, 22 unto 27. And he saith unto them, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, Taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow, you knew the truth. You knew the truth, but you purposely rejected it. I didn't believe it. See, well, you were aware of it. You were aware of it. Hence, you cannot say you did not know the truth. Okay. Did it descend the 18 inches from this lump to your heart? Most of you know. But you were aware of it. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? He said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given. And for him that hath not, even that he, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. Now think about that, for this is our instruction in righteousness. Think about that. You guys who reject the true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You think you've got it all figured out. But everything, even that you think you have, will be taken away from you. Verse 27. But those mine enemies, all you who are enemies of the true Lord Jesus Christ, all you free gracers, you Calvinists, you Jesuit coadjutor infiltrators within King James Bible believing Christianity. The majority of Christianity. Your lips are your own. Huh? Huh? You decide. You are your own God. Those are mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them. Bring hither and slay them for me. Romans 1, 21 unto 23. Romans 1, 21 unto 23. Because that when they knew God, just here, just here, a working knowledge thereof, but no wisdom. Prove that to you. Absolutely. Because that when they knew God, they just had this working thing in the head. They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God, so to behave foolishly, we've talked about that. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. First thing that's mentioned. And to birds and the four-footed beasts and creeping things. Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. Verses 3 and verse 12. Proverbs 29. Verses 3 on to verse 12. Whoso loveth wisdom... Rejoiceth his father, the fear of the Lord. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. 
Mystery Babylon the Great? The mother of harlots? Huh? Who is loud and stubborn? And her feet abideth not in her house? Hmm? She says to you guys, Come! I have decked my bed with coverings of Egypt, with tapestries from those of Egypt, from things of the world. The harlot comes to you with her bed covered with tapestry, with fine linen of Egypt, fine things of the world, and presents that to you, Christianity. <laughs> it's not funny. But he that okay, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. The king, the Lord Jesus Christ, has what? By judgment establisheth the land. His statutes and precepts, if they were followed by any nation under heaven, but they're not. But they receive gifts. They're made wine, drunk with the wine of her fornication. They receive the gifts of the whore, the harlot, Rome. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous, righteous doth sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor. But the wicked regardeth not to know it. The cause of the poor. What happened? Why? What's going on? Why do you... Why? Why? And remember, poor there is not just destitute of finances. Keep that in mind. Okay? Keep that in mind. Scornful men bring a city into a snare. But wise men turn away wrath. Right there. Jesuits. Rome has destroyed America. And the reason why America has not been destroyed yet is because of the body of Christ that is within it. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. A fool, says in his heart, there is no God, uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Again, check out some of these streaming Christians. A fool uttereth all his mind. Woohoo! If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. Are you not taught, trained, to believe that you are your own, the king of your own castle, that you are your own God? Hmm? And everything you touch is a reflection of that bringing your own thing onto yourself as your own God? Your own little sacrifices to yourself, huh? I, I, I know there's a far deeper implication there. Of course. Second Peter 2. Second Peter 2. If a ruler hearkeneth, hearkeneth unto lies. What, and again, what greater lie in the history of mankind is there other than shall be his gods. 2 Peter 2, 20-22 For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Because now you know. You know what God says. You, you know. You've heard the truth. But you've rejected it. You want your sin. You are your own God. You've hearkened on the lies. 
You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. <laughs> I, I, I think of that yutz. There's this guy, Andy, who really attacked one of our brethren or one of our brothers pretty horrifically. But um, this guy, he's, he's aware of the truth. But he has turned from it. He's aware of the truth. He knows what the truth is, but he has turned from it. Because he's his own God. All these coadjutor devils know the truth. Know the truth. But they want their cake and eat it too. And a lot of these, not a lot of them, I shouldn't say that, excuse me, but some of these guys who know the truth keep it back here and they're going to serve the Vatican all their life and again you think you're going to get on your deathbed recant and go to heaven you sir are insane you're mad are you mad bro and you know these self Theists. The Muslims, the Muslims who are aware of the truth, but yet reject it because they want their little moon god. Yeah. How come, have you ever wondered why a lot of Muslims don't go after Rome? Gee, I wonder. Anyway, let's, let's finish this up. But... It happeneth unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog male is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow female that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Remember Lot's wife? Leave, get out, don't look back. He who's, who's looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. You look back in longing, as Lot's wife did. Luke 13. Luke 13. You, you see, these guys who know the truth here. And you you devils, you think, you, you some of you really do. You really think you're on, at your end. When you're about to die, you're going to confess. And you know, Jesus Christ is coming the flesh, and that you're actually going to go to heaven when you've spent all your life serving the Vatican while knowing what the truth is. You, you know, praise the Lord, you're in for a rude awakening. Verses 24 on to verse 27 in Luke 13. Strive to enter in, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. The sting of going past the point of no return. The older you get, okay? Beg your pardon. And then the kings meet. Be beg your pardon. I'm writing down these before I forget them, okay? The older you get, the older and farther and longer you are against the Lord, all the while knowing what the truth is, the more difficult it come, becomes for you to come back. And yes, God can save anybody today. The impossible is possible. But what happens? When once the master of the house has risen up, and has shut to the door. Jesus Christ is the door there, genius. And guess what? This dispensation, which is by His grace, through our faith, okay? This dispensation has an end. Where is your God? It's continued like this for all time. No, it hasn't. This dispensation will end eventually. 
It's going to end with the redemption of the purchased possession. The body of Christ is going to be caught up to heaven. And then begins the time of Jacob's trouble. When we the body of when we the body of Christ get redeemed, caught up, history changes. Everything, everything that you think you have is going to be taken away from you. Everything changes. The door will be shut. Now, there is the time of Jacob's trouble, but that, during that dispensation, it is by faith and works. Not as it is today. But see, once the redemption happens, this dispensation, which is the easiest, yes, whereunto salvation is. Absolutely. But see, God has requirements. God has requirements. And then you got Christianity virtually, all of Christianity virtually, not all of it, but virtually all of it, says that God has no requirements. When once the master of the house has risen up and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. He shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Be too late. The sad reality is for a lot of you, I think, it is too late. That the Lord can save you. Yes, he can. But see, a lot of you, I truly believe, and I'm not talking to saints, a lot of you have gone so far that you can't come back. And when you are still here after we, the body of Christ, get redeemed, that'll be enough to jar you. But see, by then, it's too late. It's faith and works. And then you got putzes like Mr. Sunken I <laughs> telling you just believe and receive during the time of Jacob's trouble. And then you take the mark and you're damned. That's why they're doing it so badly today like this. Okay? Then shall ye begin to say, Hey, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and hast taught in the and ha, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know not, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me. All ye workers of iniquity. Let's read verse 28. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves. There is a time when it is too late. And the sad reality is, the impossible, yes, is possible with God. Amen. But the sad reality is, for a majority of you, it is too late. And that's, that's tragic. Go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, remember, is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. We are looking at this for our instruction in righteousness. Matthew 24, 46 under 51. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. This is in context during the king, uh, excuse me, during the time of Jacob's trouble, which will be faith by faith and works. We are looking at this for instruction and in righteousness. You can die at any time. When you die or when you get caught up, what's the Lord going to find you doing? Oh, dude. 
<laughs> yeah, another, again, another thing that ought to scare the hell out of you. Let, 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 let's get real here, brethren. Brethren, let's get real here. You people? Okay. Is Lori going to find you looking at, like, pornography when you die or when we get caught up? Huh? Or, or what happens if you have a little too, too much wine that night and you get all blitzkrieg, huh? When the Lord calleth, either by, hey, your time is up, or come up hither, what is he going to find you doing? That's a simple thing. I mean, when you really think about that, that's, that's a simple thing. But see, it's been justified doing whatever you want to do by evil such as just believe and receive. Don't worry about it. And see, that in and of itself shows you that these people have no regard for the Lord. Brother, do you really want the Lord when it's like, okay, it's your time to die or come up hither? Do you really want the Lord to catch you looking at some pornography? Do you really want the Lord to catch you up when you're puffing on a cigarette, chewing tobacco, drinking alcohol, abusing your wife? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. We got time. I'm going to uh, make my cake and eat it too. Just believe. Don't worry about it. See, that's where these devils will come in and deceive you. I got time. It's always been like this. I don't worry about it. They declare their sin in Sodom. They hide it not. And they boast about it. Hey, all things are lawful for me. What is the Lord going to find you doing when your time is up or the body of Christ get taken out of here. What's the Lord, brother, sister, what's the Lord going to find you doing? Brad, you're, that, that's, that's, you know, that's fear-mongering. <laughs> again, fear of the Lord. Um, what, again, watch Brother Alexander's video that the Lord gave him yesterday. Okay? Okay? Go ahead. That beautiful. You <laughs> smacked my rear end. Amen. Amen. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. Oh, oh, oh. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. This is impromptu right here. I got notes for this one, but Psalm 50. Come on. Psalm 50. Psalm 50, come on, fingers, work with me. Okay, Psalm 50, verse 17, on to verse 19. Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. Psalm 50, 17, on to 19. When thou sawest a thief, who boot the door and climb up some other way, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceits. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite 
his fellow servants, and eat and drink with the drunken. Drunken by what? The wine of the harlot. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. You could die at any time. The redemption of the purchased possession could happen now, and it'll be quicker than that. Okay? You lost people. A saint is before you. Shoulder to shoulder. It's like, you see that? The next thing you know, you blink and he's gone. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, history, everything will change. Everything. Everything will change in a moment, the twinkling of an eye. You can die at any time, man. And shall cut him asunder and appoint his portion with the hypocrites, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 5, uh, 25, verses 1 on verse 13 now. Matthew 25, contextually, is in regard of the kingdom of heaven, which is all works, okay? But we are reading this for our instruction in righteousness. Then shall the kingdom of heaven, which is all works, with Christ on the throne. You don't need faith when you can see the guy. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, fear the Lord, and five were foolish, who said in their heart there is no God but themselves. They behaved as they were foolish. Hence, what was, what was their motivation? Themselves. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And Pentecostals put this in with uh, trying to justify, uh, blah, 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 never mind them. Okay. Pentecostalism is a satanic religion. Okay? Anyway. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Think about in Gethsemane, when Jesus Christ, God the Father, was praying. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. When you were all asleep. When you didn't expect it. See, one of the things that we as the saints need to keep on our guard about is, you know, yes, in Song of, so uh, Song of Solomon, Chapter 2, there's great evidence to show that the redemption of the purchased possession may happen in spring. You can come to this and say, okay, it'll happen in the spring at midnight. Okay, that, that is possible. But see, the suddenness of it, Okay, if these guys knew when the, for example, if you knew precisely the day that you were going to die, what would you do? Think about this. What would you do if it wasn't in the air that at any moment, at any moment, this is why people who are against the eminent return, you know, the redemption of the purchased possession, that, it, you know, well, there are some out there who's like, well, it, there still needs to... Um, that's dangerous. Why? Because that gives to what? Complacency. That gives people a leverage to rest and uh, put their feet up, you know? Put their feet up. Hey, I got time. Let me enjoy what the Lord has given me. Let me pull down my barns and build greater. What does the Lord say, thou fool? This night thy soul shall be required of thee. All that stuff you got, who's it's going to be, huh? See, you got some of these guys, some of these King James Bible even Christians, 
who purport to believe in the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, that, that, that's scripture. But yet, it can't happen. I mean, they, they kind of, it's weird. It's, it's like a blurred thing for them. The redemption of the purchased possession could happen at any time. They have all the stuff over at Jerusalem. A brother, you know, informed me that they already got the red heifers and stuff like that. The Hebraic Jews, out of the pockets of the Vatican, could have that third temple built in no time flat. Okay? No time flat. It could happen at any time. But when you have people, it's like, well, yeah, it could, but, but, that but. Yea, hath God said. That lends to complacency. When we are to live our lives as the saints, not in fear of man, but in the fear of the Lord, not in this fear that we could die at any moment. If you live like that, then you do nothing. But knowing that, okay, a, a piano could fall on my head, okay? I could be walking around, do, 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 and all of a sudden I'm in, it was a, oh, it happened. The redemption. Oh, by the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay? It could happen at any moment. It can. You got people out there who, they're very, they're very, their ways are movable. They're very wise to not say that, well, it couldn't happen at any moment. But, and what they teach, what they preach, how they live, the example that they give. Do you really believe that the Lord could come at any moment? Hmm? When you at least expect it? Again, again, if you knew when you were going to die, precisely the day and the hour and the year, let's just say, what would you do? What would you do? How many of you, seriously, it's like, okay, I'm going to die on so and so a date. At what time? I'm going to get out there and sow my royal oats. I'm going to get out there like Solomon. Like Solomon in Ecclesiastes. I built me great works. I planted me vineyards. You know, I went out to see what was that good for the sons of men to behold madness and folly and all the while retaining my wisdom. You would, wouldn't you? You would. Saints now, saints who are sealed until the day of redemption, we'd be like, Okay, I, 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 okay, let's, let's, like, hey, babe, let's, let's get in that car, let's go get, you know, let's, you know, as the Lord will, uh, let's uh, live for him, and whatever. But how many of you, and see, this is what a lot of, some of these devils are doing. They, they, you know, they think that on their deathbed they're going to recant, and you, 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 you're on crack cocaine. If you knew. How many of you, knowing if you knew the exact time you were going to die, how many of you would live worse than the devil? And then at the end, oh, I guess I've done my stuff now. I'll believe and save. And by then, and at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of, our, of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there, not, there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, okay, look at this, okay, like Shimon. The sorcerer, you pray for me, he said to Peter. You pray for me. And the time draweth nigh. It's like, you pray for me. It's like, no, dude. You go to the Lord yourself. You go to the Lord. Don't ask me to pray for you. You go to the Lord. 
Okay? You pray for me that all these things don't happen to me. You pray for me to be saved. And we do pray for people to be saved, absolutely. But see, what we're getting at here is these guys will wait to the last minute and at that time, living their whole life, going that way. But when the time comes, you think you're going to do the U-turn and come back? While they went to buy, scrambling at the last minute, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. All your booting of the door will be nothing. Once the door is shut, this dispensation ends. It will be faith and works. God's attention will be, again, specifically back upon the children of Israel. Well, today it is to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? But after this dispensation, the door is shut. Of course, people will get saved during the time of Jacob's trouble. Of course. The point is, all you guys living today in rejecting the true gospel, in rejecting the true Lord, you think you've got time and all of a sudden, boom! Then what? Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord! Open to us. But by then it's too late. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore. For ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Notice it doesn't say year there. Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, Man will not know the day or the hour. When Jesus, hey, one message, dude. When Jesus said, neither the Son, he was referring unto mankind, not himself, because he is God the Father. Okay, that idiot, uh, uh, what's his name? Eric Lionfart. He even went that way. Okay, but uh, there will be a, a video in the description box for that, uh, where we go over that, okay? But, notice it says day or hour. It doesn't say the year. During the time of Jacob's trouble, it's seven years. They'll be able to know the year. But the day or the hour, they won't. Romans 1. Go back to Romans 1. And because y'all, you know, count slackness, you know, where's your God? We got time. It's always been this way. And it's always going to be. No, it ain't. <laughs> no, it ain't. Romans 1, 27 on 32. Romans 1, 27. On to verse 32. <clears throat> and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense with a C, a noun, person, place, or thing, <coughs> of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, Steve Anderson, a proponent of Calvinism, took the Calvinistic doctrine of the reprobate doctrine, saying that once someone has a reprobate mind, they cannot be saved. That is not the truth. Okay? That is not the truth. Okay? A reprobate, someone who has a reprobate mind can be saved. The impossible is possible with God. However, the probability gets lower and lower the farther you go. Okay? Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, 
mur uh, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, w malignity, whisp uh, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to bar parents, without understanding, departing from evil, covenant breakers, Without natural affection, squid love their own, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Your friends are going to be there too. You're on the highway to hell, remember? So, when you deny the Lord, when you deny the gospel, when you put off that day and then all of a sudden you see the end coming and then you're going to make this, you know, okay, this is the day. I'm going to do it. But then you find out that you can't. Why? Because you have conditioned yourself and have gone so far. Not that the Lord cannot save you, but you have gone so far. And Happened. This is Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11. 15 out of 17. God will give you what you want. God will give you what you want. Zechariah 11. And what do, what do most of you want? The Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. Your leaders cause you to err. Those who lead you cause thee to err. Your Jesuit trained pastors in your phallus houses, the Jesuit controlled governments. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land. Who's the one doing the raising up? Hey! You don't know, receive the love of the truth? You don't want the truth? The Lord will give you what you want. You want to believe a lie? Go right ahead. He'll allow a foolish shepherd to rule over you. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Kent Helvin comes to mind right away. He's a Jesuit. Certain other of the King James Bible believing Christianity flavor. Woe to the idle shepherd. And I love that. Idle. I D O L. Not I D E L. Okay? Like, it, uh, uh, where is that word? Uh, Pharaoh says, you are idle. You are idle. Like the, the motor running, but you ain't going anywhere. That says, idle shepherd. The one that everybody idles. The angel of light. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You are of your father the devil. The little jig god of this world. The prince of the power of the air. Your idle little shepherd. Woe to the idle shepherd. That leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up. And his right eye shall be utterly darkened. <laughs> and Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Uh, and yes, you got to remember. Nothing happens without the Lord say so. God is in control. God is allowing Satan to do things on earth for judgment against this earth. And once the body of Christ gets taken out of the way, oh boy, no one's going to be able to hinder him. There'll be the two Moses, uh, there'll be Moses and Elijah and stuff like that. But he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Satan will be basically able to, for close to seven years, for the seven year period, will be able to do as he sees fit without any problems with, from us, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. But see, you guys don't want him to rule over you. What do you say? That's lordship salvation.
Your lips are your own. Yes, all things are lawful for you. Yes, you got to make the right choices. But so what? You're not going to give uh, an account to him? He isn't God. He isn't a king. Deuteronomy 32, verses 34 and 43. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. They know the truth, but they reject it. They don't want to. They, they they don't want to have it go from here to here. They return to their vomit, and they they go back to the mire. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom, ye, in whom they trusted? Yeah. What is the one that you trust in, huh? Yeah. Right back at you, pal. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. <laughs> See, you you know what, what Satan offers? Fine. Let him save you in the day when uh, account is there. Good luck. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me kill and I make alive I wound and I heal neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand where, where are you gonna go who are you who are you what are you gonna do where are you gonna hide for I lift up my hand to heaven and say I live forever if I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and reward them that hate me. I'll read into 43. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O nations, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. Ecclesiastes 10. Ecclesiastes 10. Verses 5 and 7. Ecclesiastes 10, 5 and 7. Five hundred seven. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceedeth from the ruler, the prince of the power of the air, of the air. And what does that say? What did we read in Psalm twelve? Huh? In Psalm twelve? Huh? What did we read? The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Verse 6. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. The richness of the blessings of heaven, not necessarily financially or, or temporally, as it were. But folly is set in great dignity. Evil is good and good is evil. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Isaiah 10. Isaiah 10. Isaiah 10. Woe unto them that decree... Oh, verses 
1 on to, we'll read 19. On to 19. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and, are, and that write grievousness, which they have prescribed. Ye shall be as gods. You call evil good and good evil. To turn aside the needy from judgment, and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey, and that they may rob the fatherless. That's what the Jesuits do. And what will ye do in the day of visitation? And in the desolation which shall come from far, to whom will ye flee for help? And where will ye leave your glory? Go back to go back to Deuteronomy thirty-two. <laughs> Thirty-nine. Okay. See now that I, even I am he. And there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Verse 4 in Isaiah 10. Without me they shall bow down under the prisoners. And they shall fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. Now, allowing this guy to wreak havoc for judgment's sake. I will send him against a hypocritical nation. And against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey. And to tread them down like the mire of the streets, like the foolish shepherd who feeds himself and doesn't go after the sheep. Except to destroy them. Deck the halls, buddy. I will send him against a hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. Will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets? Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so. But it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off nations not a few. For he saith, who is the he? King of Syria. Are not my princes altogether kings? Like Nebuchadnezzar, for the Lord humbled him. It's like, is not this Babylon that I have made? King of your own castle? Is not, is not Kelno as Carchemish? Is not Hamath as Arphad? Arphad is not Samaria as Damascus? As my hand hath found the kingdoms of the idols and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and Samaria? Verse 11. Shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? You know, when you read the Old Testament, you see what the Lord did to the apple of his eye, and y'all think that you're going to skirt judgment for making you your own idol? Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and upon Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. You shall be like the most high, huh? Yeah. For he saith, by the strength of my hand have I done it, and by my wisdom <laughs> While we're here, Isaiah 14, 13 and 14. And let's read verses 12 on to 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. <laughs> this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. We will not have this man to rule over us. <laughs> I will also, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. 
yet thou shalt be brought down to hell sides of the pit verse 13 in Isaiah 10 for he saith by strength of my hand I have done this and by my wisdom for I am prudent and I have removed the bonds of, bonds of the people. And God's the one who, dis, who established the bounds of the habitations of the people. Remember the Tower of Babel? What happened? Everybody got together and they wanted to make a tower. God set the boundaries of the people. You guys stay there. You stay there. You stay there. But what did Satan do? Get everybody together. You have mixed everything, brought everything together. When God is a God of distinction, you have blurred the distinction. Christian. And I have removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures and have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people. And as, and as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or peeped. Look at verse 15 here. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it. Who do you think you are? The answer is most of you think you are your own God. As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift itself up as if it were no wood. Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness, and he granted their request, but sent leanness into their soul. And under his glory, he shall kindle a burning like the burning of fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire. And who is that light? And his Holy One, it tells you right there, capital H and O, the light, Holy One, this is reference unto Jesus Christ. For a flame, he came not to send peace, but a sword. He shall baptize you with fire. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and briars in one day. Thorns and briars, the things of the world. And shall consume the glory of his forest and his fruitful field, both soul and body. And they shall be as when a standard bearer, standard bearer fail, fainteth. And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few. And sh that a child may write them. That a child should, shall write them. Isaiah 40, verses 3 on to verse 8, and we shall be done. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth has spoken it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, 
the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. Vanity of va uh, vanity, said the preacher. Man at his best state is altogether vanity. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forever. That is going to be it for this little video. Thank you very much to all of you who may watch this. If you do, um, again, check out Brother Alexander's video, which will be in the description box for you to see if you don't see it in the community section. Like I said at the beginning of this video, please, please keep your servant in prayer. Um, I plan on doing this on Monday. Uh, so there may not be a video on Monday. We'll see what happens. It's not up to me, ultimately. But uh, this Monday, the 13th, uh, got a call, ComEd, and um, be like, hey, I, yeah, I, I got duped. I looked about this Nordic energy, and it's a scam. So I want to cancel that and get back with uh, ComEd. So please keep your servant in prayer for that, please. Thank you, brethren. Thank you so very, very much. We love you and we pray for so many of you. Thank you for watching this if you do. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord.